I'm happy now to be introducing another one of our friends, and at moments, worthy competitor, Kian Kanten Farouche, the CEO and founder of Workera. Kian is one of the best minds in AI in the world of corporate skills and learning. So their platform, it allows you to assess and verify your skills. Uh, this relationship, it reflects the ethos that we have been talking about. One where we are committed to enabling you to connect all of the best providers and tools and solutions together to enable everything that must be true to unlock this skills future we are all so excited to see come alive. Kian, welcome to Vision. Thank you, Dave. In a true Simon Sinek fashion, he says to always start with why. Give me the why behind Workera. That's a great question. When we started Workera, a lot of large organizations were telling us that they were struggling to understand their skills, understand their strengths and their gaps, understand how they compare to benchmarks, where do I stand in the broader market? And it turns out that this measurement possibility is the tip of the spear of pretty much every enterprise talent strategy. Because if you don't understand your skills, then you can't make the right talent decisions. You're essentially sh shooting in the dark. You can't uh, develop your people effectively. You can't match them to the right projects. You can't identify opportunities internally for them. And so that was the why. Can we provide a measurement system that is reliable, accurate, fun to engage with for the learner, and that gives you something back that is not pass-fail, but is actually extremely rich in the type of skills, insights that it can give you. What has made Workera sort of a leader in this field and uh, able to uh, do this when so many others have struggled? Yeah, I think it's easy to build quizzes, yeah. uh, but it's really hard to build an assessment that is valuable, actionable, you know, statistically uh, sound. Uh, and I think part of the, 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 the innovation that we brought to the ecosystem is one, the granularity of our measurements. If I run an adaptive assessment on you, I'm going to start based on you know, soft signals that I have about you, maybe your title or maybe your department or maybe your years of experience. Mm -hmm. But you know, those are high level information that can help me start somewhere with my adaptive assessments. And then from there, I will use predictive capabilities to say, if David knows this, he probably knows that. If David doesn't know this, he probably doesn't know that. And that allows me in about an hour to give you a very rich set of insights on that pretty large skill requirement. So we all have a lot of skills, probably depending on how we define them, hundreds, thousands. But in our daily work, most of us are probably using a dozen core skills, you know, maybe, maybe two dozen, and then you know, there's some ancillary or tangential skills we use on occasion. You know, and then there's probably some foundation of just like a lot of skills. You know, how do you think about, you know, not every skill is created equal or we don't use every skill equally. And so as you translate that into the Workera platform and approach, you know, how do you think about it? A couple of frameworks for skills requirements that are like, uh, that I like. The first one is that skills requirements are built by a variety of people. An executive may define the skills that are necessary for an entire organization, such as AI readiness, mm -hmm. collaboration, problem solving, critical thinking. A manager may define skills for their team that are necessary for the next six months to deliver the project. And an individual may add to those requirements their own skills, uh, aspirations, the things that they care about longer term for their career. All of that together comes into a very well-defined skill requirement that an employee will be verified on, get feedback on, and then upskill against. The second framework that I think is trending right now across our customer base is the T-shaped career framework, where the horizontal bar of the T represents the durable skills, those that are more foundational, as yep. you said, those that may last longer in terms of how much helpful they are on the job. And then you have the vertical bar of the T that are more perishable skills. They may need refreshing on a very regular basis. I think innovation can only happen with both durable and perishable skills. They, uh, they, can, uh, they happen with perishable skills, but they continue with durable skills. If you don't have the durable skills, you will uh, uh, lack speed in terms of how much you learn over the future, and you will not keep up with progress. So I like that T-shaped framework. As you zoom out and look into the future, the impact that AI is going to have on learning, is it overhyped? Is it real? 
you know, what's your point of view? I'm an optimist. No. I'm not a doomer. Uh, I think it is underhyped. Mm. I feel that we've seen uh, the first few generations of large language models, sometimes called multimodal models. Um, I think the next generations that are going to come in 2025 and beyond are going to be mind blowing and are going to revolutionize the learning ecosystem. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is because we are seeing, for example, in the coding space, software engineering co-pilots, the ability for AI to generate pretty amazing stuff that can be multimodal. And um, I think for learning, it matters. Every learner is different. They will have different skill sets. They will have different learning preferences. And if you're able to generate low latency almost immediately, the immersive experience that they care about, mm -hmm. how magical is that? Yeah. Um, it's a game changer. I think AI you know, improves assessments, AI improves learning. I mean, you'll, we'll all see in, the, in a few years that you can consider content generation to be almost immediate and personalized to the individual. You know, the, the potential of AI for our space is tremendous. And so there was no way that I could ignore that. And uh, that's why I spent my graduate school focused on AI. And I tried to tie it as well as I could with the skills ecosystem. That's awesome. Talk to me now about the benefit to the individual, to the employee. Like as we shift into this skills-based world, as they can get their skills irrespective of where they've acquired them verified, like what's the benefit you see? How does this change things for the worker, for the employee? The context of the job market is going to change. First, because the half-life of skills is going down, meaning that skills need to be refreshed constantly the learning velocity of an individual has to be high if they want to compete in the job market in the future. The second aspect is we will live in a world where most people that are going to apply for jobs are coming from a university, a job, a program that you may never have heard of. Mm -hmm. And so the need to prove their skills is even higher than it used to be. Mm. And so I think that people will have a variety of ways to prove their past skills, to prove their future potential through passive ways of measuring that are continuous tracking, through active ways of measuring that are in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, able to prove a certain skill and have that digital badge. Um, I think there's going to be a variety of ways for people to prove their skills. And, and I'm really bullish on the fact that I hope in, in five to 10 years from now, we will have a very precise pulse of the supply of skills in the market, of the demand of skills for skills in the market. And then we can turn the workforce into a much more fluid um, uh, system that, that can reduce unemployment, among other things. As you think about partnering with Degreed, you know, what made you want to partner? What do you think about it? First, uh, Degreed is the leading learning experience platform in the world. I mean, you created the category, right? You're the OG. Uh, and with hundreds of customers around the world. For, for a long time, we were thinking, what is WorkCare's unique uh, a specialty that it can provide effectively to the ecosystem and that can contribute to other platforms? And for us, that you know, ikigai, if you will, is uh, skills verification, verified skills intelligence. And I think we're really, really good at that. But there's other things that we don't do as well. And sometimes I, I, I tell my teams, you know, if you look at the vendors in L&D, everybody will have dozens of features on their website. But when you look between the lines, there is one or two things that companies are really, really good at. Mm. And if they can partner with each other, if they can connect to each other, I think ultimately it benefits the end user and ultimately it benefits the enterprise. And so I'm glad that you pushed for that interoperability, that integration within our ecosystem, because ultimately if we can all provide our specialty to our clients, then they're the winners in the end. Amazing. Kian, thank you so much. Uh, you're someone I admire, respect, someone I am trying to learn from. And uh, from everyone at Degreed, we're very grateful for the WorkEra Degreed partnership. Thanks for being here. Thank you, David, for having me.